All right, guys. Good morning. How are we all doing? Everybody signing in. Instagram, YouTube. How are we doing, guys? I'm just going to give people a couple of minutes to jump in before I explain what we're going to do today. I'm going to get my little perch to sit on while we chat through the uh, session this morning. Where's everyone signing in from? Are we ready for a training session? So I want to go through a little bit of work today. Um, so let me know if you've got a bars, dip bars, pull-up bars, set of rings, anything like that to hand, which I can, uh, we can shape the session around. So type up in the comments, guys, if we've got a little bit of kit to play with. If not, it doesn't matter. Don't run away. Um, there's some stuff we're going to do on the floor, ground-based. So you don't have to have some kit today. But if you haven't got any kit and you want to do the whole workout, your triceps and shoulders are going to get a proper little session in today. All right. So just let me know, guys, if you've got kit, you got who's got pull-up bar, dip bar, something like that to hang a little hang on, hang on or set of rings, anything like that today, which we can get a little bit of use out of. Give me some thumbs up. Lee, how's it going, mate? Hope you're well, mate. Saw your art this morning. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, guys, we've got a few people with some kit on hand. Loving it. Okay. So oh, injury therapy, got it all. A full suite. Perfect. So you guys are getting a little bit of opportunity to play around a little bit today with, um, uh, you can pick the exercises effectively. I'm going to give you some some options to, to, uh, to choose from. Now, this main focus of this workout today is going to be all about using volume and some different rep and set variables to now allow you to be able to just bring a little bit more variety into your training program. So the focus of this is that often a set will be like three sets of 10, eight sets of four. That's real kind of like strength-based variables that are tried and tested in the literature. We know they work, right? And now there's another kind of form of training, which is like been popularized through CrossFit, which is often around like, I'm going to do 20, 50, 40, 100, whatever it might be. Those are kind of like more metabolic conditioning type workouts. You can get strength gains on through them, obviously, but what we want to focus on today is a bit more around getting strength-based volume in the program. And I want you to start thinking about using the acute variables, reps, sets, intensity, tempo, and rest periods to kind of manipulate a little bit around those. So we're going to go through three different versions or variables. We're going to get warmed up to start off with. We're also then going to get, we're then going to go into a little bit of a, um, we're going to use pipe push-ups because lots of people struggle to get strength and volume in these. So we're going to use pipe push-ups and we're going to use a max reps type variable. So we, I, I explain this, it's like a, a strength-based cluster. We're then going to look at a pyramid and then we're going to finish with like a volume-based big kind of slug of a session four and a half minutes of clusters all right so there's a bit of volume to them. when you guys go through i'm going to suggest some exercises but you can and kind of mix them up as we go through all right so a few people have got kit uh, jesse brown you've got no kit it doesn't matter just stick for the floor exercises you can just do push-ups and when we do some stuff on the bar you can maybe just um use push-ups or you can kind of just watch and uh, have a little bit of a, a learning session as we go up all right if we are you guys, so everyone can see where I'm going to go. Morning, everyone signing and waving at me. All right, so first thing we're going to do, you guys might well, well be comfortable with the YTW. We're going to look at it from a standing perspective today, so we're going to get a little bit different. So you're going to come through. I'm going to go silent to show you what's going to happen to start off with. Make sure this rib case stays locked down top of the hips, like ready to take a punch in the midsection. Shoulders going to come into a midpoint. You guys can follow along with this. And then we're just going to gently just pull the shoulders back together slightly. And I want you to pull your hands up into wide position. Don't allow yourself to arch into the shape here. So we're going to go wide, squeeze shoulder blades together, and push up nice and tall, come back down, and then out into a T. And then we're going to go one up, squeeze together, and then one down. All right, back into a Y. So you come up, squeeze through a Y. Nice little squeeze of shoulder blades behind the back there as we come up, out into a T. Go one more, alternate, and then alternate. Okay, let's go again two more times through Y, into a T into one up, side one down, other side, last time through, into a Y, squeeze, and I want that muscle activation between the shoulder blades, two, in the T, one side, opposite side, all right, perfect, all right, next one, you can do these without, guys, if you haven't got anything to hold on to, we're just going to do some band rotations, if you've got a broomstick, pole, anything, if not, guys, just want you to work through some range, the band just and the oil stick just helps give you a little bit of control of the shoulders. So I'm going to grab through, set. I'm going to come up and over, and I want to just try and get a smooth rotation through. Controlled, up, and then over. 
All right, control that rotation overhead. If you haven't got anything, guys, you can just start in a position you can come through. Just feel that stretch. You're going to see the hands now start to come out because I haven't got the tension between. We'll just work back into that position and then come back over. Come through, up, squeeze out, come round, back through. I'm going to go one more set with a band. Come through, back up and over. These are great little bits of kit to have. If you've got a band, just I often just work through some activation patterns. Pulls, like lateral pulls, so horizontal pull, like an overhead pull position, work really well just on starting to get the shoulders warmed up. So if you haven't got one, grab a little resistance band. All right, let's go down to the, I tell you what, we'll get on the bar while we're standing up. The next one I'm gonna do is if you've got something to hang from, um, just set your rings up a little bit higher because you're gonna go pull up. So set them to a pull up height. Uh, if you've got a bar or pull up bar, then we're gonna go through some scap circles. So. I'm going to bring this in, you guys can see. Right, so the job's going to be hang position. We're going to go dead hang, start off with pull through into active hang, and then drop back down. The next job is going to be to do that in a circle. So we're going to pull through, and you're going to see my shoulders start to move forwards and then backwards. We're going to go through three active hangs, three four rotations, three on the back. So the drop in, dead hang, completely arms are straight. So I'm setting the pull up. Then hold, back down, up, hold, back down, up, hold, and then back down. So these are active hang positions. The next one's gonna be a scap circle. So from here, we're gonna go, it's gonna move forwards in a, in a circular rotation through the shoulders. So to come back down, I'm gonna come up and go into my active hang position, but I'm gonna come through, and the head's gonna come forwards through. In forwards and backwards are pretty similar to be fair. We're just making these circles through the shoulders and then go backwards. As we rotate through, give me a bit of time, guys. Sometimes it takes a little bit just to kind of work those out. If you are sort of hadn't done them before, just the coordination pattern of moving through. I'm going to go for one more set. My shoulder's a bit clicky today. You might find some crunching and grinding. As long as it's not painful, then you're okay to keep going. So set in, pull through, and just try and keep a nice smooth circle. With me down here a little bit. We'll get close and personal. All right. We're going to spend a little bit of time on our in a push up position today. So, I just want to get a little bit of activation through the shoulders and touching the pushing pattern. So, we're going to go into push up position and we're going to go into some scap push up. So, if I just allow my shoulders to sit in, the scap push up is just going to be that movement. I'm just trying to slide my scaps around the side of the ribcage. So, from position drop in, drive up, that's it. Drop down, drive up, push the hands into the ground, push the shoulder away. I'm not trying to like stick my bump in the air. Try to see a nice flat shape. Push like that. Push, let's go through a set of eight. You can count yourself through. Three. Warm up exercise we're going to do. I'm going to take you through the world's greatest stretch. All right. So, this one. So, we're going to start standing. Yeah, bring you guys up a little bit. All right. So, we start standing position. We're going to take one stride forwards. We're going to come down so we're into like a lunge position. Back leg stays dead straight. Your front knee high. Keep that bum squeeze on, on the right leg. We're now going to take the left elbow and touch it on the floor if we can. All right, from here, we're going to rock back. Keep the hands on the ground, rock onto the heel. Do that hamstring stretch. Come back through, sit up, and then we're going to make that wide position overhead. All right, I'll go through it again with your change legs. So, big, big lunge stride, hands on the ground by the front, back leg stays straight, elbow comes up, touch the ground. If you can, or as low as you can, get a bit of rotation. Back out to the floor, heel raise, or toe raise, I should say. Sit back through, push up, get your bottom and squeeze that wide, wide position on. All right, stand back up one more time. Each side, left leg forward, right leg straight, hands to the ground. Left elbow goes in, comes back out, rock the heel, so pull the toe up, 
step back through, come up, hit the Y. Last time, right foot forward, left foot straight, or back leg straight, right elbow to the ground, come back out, rock the heel, sit through, push up, stand up. All right, world's greatest stretch, call that, because if you're gonna do one stretch, you might as well just do that one because you hit a load of different stuff a little bit today. Are we still? There we go, I think we're all back. Okay, so we're gonna get into a little bit of um, a pipe push-up clusters, all right? So, get you guys to test your kind of max effort pipe push-ups. Loads of people struggle with these because it's quite a difficult pattern when you get to body weight training to push that vertical shape. So, so many people want to do handstands, but a lot of people lack vertical pushing strength. Now, what this form of cluster does is breaks a big set down into smaller chunks. So, it might be that when we test in a minute, you can do eight reps or five reps max, right? That's fine. What we're then going to do is break that set down when we go into it into small chunks. So, if, say my max is eight. If I want to then try and, I can then, by using these clusters, I can then actually get nine reps by breaking them into smaller sets. So I might go five reps, 10 second break, two reps, 10 second break, two reps again, 10 second break. So even though my max in one go, when I test it is eight, by using the interbreak break into set rest periods, I can get nine reps out. It's just a really easy way to add a little bit of volume at a decent intensity in. So we're just taking these little pauses in between. So pipe push up, a little bit of it, just so someone knows what we're doing. We're gonna go push up position, Get in the shot, water feet forwards, nice high position, elbows screw back in, I want to drop down, head to the ground, push back out. All right, that's the line we're trying to make. So, if you're good at these, and you've got quite a little bit in the tank, what I want you guys to do is think about potentially grabbing something like a chair, or somewhere where you can like elevate your feet slightly, um, or you can elevate the hands. If you're on the, if you're kind of just starting out at floor level, that's cool. Just do them on the floor. All right. Your job now is to go away. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. I'll do a set as well to warm us up. See how many you can do in one go. All right. So just do as many reps as you can in one sitting. If you can do more than 10, you're going to need to elevate your feet a little bit for this one. I'll try and make it a bit more difficult. If you're just working on the floor, once as many reps as you can do in one go, and then type some numbers in for me. I want to know how you guys are getting on. So, set yourself up, water toes up. For those of you that want to listen to what I see, what I mean about raising the feet, if I've got something, it doesn't really matter how you've got that high bench or a chair works really well. You can put my feet a bit higher, oops, which means I can stack a bit more weight over and progress it that way. Okay? What's going to happen is we're going to take that number of reps and we're going to break them down, add one on. So. I think my, it's my YouTube, guys, YouTube, my in and out, and my losing connection. All right, bear with me a second, because I can just see that we might be having some slight internet issues. I'm going to lift you guys up, try not to drop my laptop. Okay, one sec. Let's see. Either that, or I'm going to need to spin you guys, I'm going to go inside. Set change, whole fire. Let's see if I can spin you guys in a little bit. Wasn't prepared for the indoor session today. Let's see if that's any better. One sec. Right, let's try again. A little bit closer to the Wi Fi router. Any better? YouTube, I think that might improve a little bit. Okay, so you've got some numbers. So if, if everyone's missed that, you can get, you were going to work on your, your max reps of your pipe push-ups, okay? So, whatever you've done, say you have seen some people at seven, some people at 14. If you've got 14 reps, guys, then we're just going to try and ramp that number up um, a little bit by making it more difficult. So elevate your feet for something. If you can do feet 14, feet on the floor, get your feet jacked up, and I want you to try and aim for something where you can do about 10. All right, so... Let's, for argument's sake, you've got seven reps. I've seen somebody post that one up. What I want you to now do is you're going to do a set of four, take a 10-second break. You're then going to do a set of two, 10-second break, and then you're going to go another two, 10-second break. So we're going to see if we can hit eight reps where you can previously only do four. So let's go through that together. So push-up position. Let's set up. 
So if we're going to go, let's say well, I'm going to say you guys can work the number of reps that you want to do. I'm going to go for seven for that demo. So I'm going to drop in the control, push out one, two, three, just control it, four. All right, take a break, put the clock on 10 seconds. And then we're going to go for our next one. It's going to be two reps. All right, so it's going to give us a total of six that we've done all together. Okay, ready? Let's get set up again, feet up. Drop in one, two, have a rest. Okay, whatever number of reps you guys are doing, just break them down to mini sets yourself. Five seconds until we finish the set. Ready, and let's go again. Last one, two reps to finish. One, two. All right, real simple. But what we're doing is just starting to add a little bit more volume on and we get that extra bit of intensity at the same time, all right? So, just bears, that all makes sense, guys. Just give me a little thumbs up if, we're, if you're on the same page as me. Adding up these, or breaking down these bigger sets into smaller chunks, all right? So we'll go through another set. Let's say, if, if that's an example for a seven, let's do an example for a 10. So if you can do 10 reps, let's break this one down so we can try and get 11, or we're gonna elevate feet slightly. So, uh, let's go for, let's go six, three, two. See if we can hit that one. All right, so it's gonna give us 11 reps at 10 rep max. All right, let's do another set. Work on whatever numbers you want. I'm just giving you some examples to play around with. So six reps on the go to start off with. If you're ready, you can join in. Then 10 seconds rest in between these mini sets. So we're gonna go through one. If you can do 14, guys, and you can't elevate your feet, let's work on tempo. So we're gonna go a little bit slower on the way down. Two, drop it in. Three. Four, five, six. Rest for 10 seconds. There we go. Always hang to have a clock on with this one, guys. Five seconds to go. Four, three, two, one. Let's go again. So this time we're going to aim for a set of three. All right. 10 seconds rest. That gives me nine in total. And then five, four, three, two to do to finish this one, guys. Feet up, two decent reps, control that tempo, drive out strong. One, two. All right, nice. Have a rest period. Uh, so there we go, a little bit of just an example there. We've got a breaking down some reps and sets. Hope that all kind of fits together. You could do that, pull-ups dips, push-ups, any, any kind of exercise where you're trying to improve just basic strength, improving the increased amount of volume you can get in a set is super effective. So get some more um, of these sets in, just build them through, break the reps down as you need to, the big chunk and then two smaller ones. Sometimes like a key one that I go for is if I'm trying to work at um, eight rep max. So I'll go five, then hit two, and then a one. Or you can do it however you want to, but just keep those rest periods short in between. All right, good. Everyone on board with these like a, like a strength-based cluster. We're gonna do a volume-based cluster in a minute. Build those in, get some more strength adaptation. All right, perfect. Okay, so next one we're gonna go for, guys, and I'm gonna have a problem now because I moved. Uh, we're gonna go for some pull-ups in a pyramid. All right, so we're gonna go this time. You can start off, like I did this set on this of the week. We went 10, 9, 8, 7, 4, Six, five, four, three, two, one, and then one, and uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just a pyramid up and down. The reason I like these is that we get to start to work in just across the strength range. We get some volume in. It's a bit more interesting than just kind of going three sets of ten, or even German volume training where he's going ten sets of ten. The pyramid makes it more interesting. And if you can do that ten to one, and then back up to ten, you're gonna get nine to nine reps in a session. If you ask someone to do ten sets of ten on a pull up, they're probably going to find that quite difficult to do. For a number of different reasons, this pyramid set makes it a little bit more interesting. All right, so let me see if we can go through this together. I'm gonna to try and spin you guys around again. Sorry for this. I will learn that we don't get good Wi-Fi reception. With me being outside. Let's see if I can get you guys in for this. All right, so if you want to guys, 
you can join in with this one. We're going to go pull-ups. Well, I'm going to go pull-ups because I need to get some pull-ups in my day anyway. But you can go dips. You could go push-ups if you haven't got any kit. You can just do these on the floor. We're going to do push-ups for a giant cluster in a second in a minute. You might want to go um, pipe push-ups again. You can do whatever you want to really. So pick a movement you want to do, body weight row, whatever it is. And we're going to work through a pyramid on five, four, three, two, one. And we're going to see if we can go back up two, three, four, five. All right, so a bit of volume based. I mean, a lot of chat on this one, but it's just an opportunity to get some work done. So YouTube, I need to bring you guys up a little bit. Having a mare today. You guys just get to go and see the sky for a bit. All right, pull-ups then. Off we go. First set of five. So if you just pick something, move it, you can do for five repetitions, all right? So control the tempo. Let's make sure that we're giving you strict and discipline with how we're choosing to move. Always move with good quality. Chin up. Pull up, whichever you choose, all right? So nice and easy when you're ready, go for a set of five. Don't fall out the bottom if you're doing pull-ups, guys. Two, three, four. Five, all right, we're gonna go one minute rest now. So just easy guys, we're gonna these the rest periods is an interesting one in terms of how we get adaptation. Um, the longer the rest, the more kind of strength orientated it becomes. We're gonna look for a bit of an endurance hypertrophy type adaptation with these. So one minute, get a decent amount of time to get some recovery. Obviously, the, the shorter the pyramid that you're thinking of doing, the shorter the rest period you can do, and you can play with these between um, you can play with rest periods in between to make sure you can get the volumes done. Hip hop head pyramids are a great way to go, but a preferred method I've found is to follow Pavel's ascending ladder technique with three minute rest periods between each ladder. 72 to, yeah, there's so many different ways to get um, reps and sets in. And this one with a pyramid is just one of those, and you can change your rest periods. The rest in that three minute period, as I said, depends on what kind of adaptation that you're looking for. The other nice thing with this you've got is you can actually sort of start to add weight as the reps go lower as well, which gives you more like a maximum strength type adaptation. So let's go again, four reps this time. Okay, minute on the rest. What I like about these is like psychologically, you can start to just, each time you know when you get tired, you're like, oh, next one's only three, then it's only two, then it's over one, then breaking down a large amount of work into something which feels quite achievable. All right, so we're gonna just go for another minute on the rest period. We might go chat and then do pull-ups. Any questions on any of this, guys? Or we're all kind of in the midst of, in the midst of pull-ups. Yeah, my internet connection today is having a mare, isn't it? I'm sorry about that. All right, three reps this time. Let's get ready to go. Here we set, guys. Three reps on the pyramid. All right, good. Three down. Two's the next one. Pretty straightforward. Uh, no put bar, so when you're doing on the door, no problem. As I said, these are the same pre basic principles for strength training you can pick with any exercises. Use them across a range of different kit options that you've got. What do we just do? Three, two next. All right, any questions, guys? Play around with some of this stuff, it's good fun. Just bring something a little bit different to your training. I've been using these quite a lot recently. It's just a really nice way to get the basics nailed down in a slightly more sort of interesting way rather than just doing three sets of 10 or eight sets of four, four sets of eight and, and that sort of stuff. All right. Next one, then let's go two this time. Be strict in the tempos with these guys. You start to bring the rest, the rest of the, uh, the numbers down. You've got a little bit of gas in the tank. Let's be super controlled on how we move, right? So we'll go for a slightly longer, it's eccentric this time. If you can manage it. So I'm going to drop in for like a three or four second eccentric. So pull through, nice high pull, hold it, control that lower, under control. Next one back out, under control. Two, all right, we'll do one more set of this, guys. 
and then I'll take you into the last little bit of a cluster finisher and we'll all do that together. Push-ups, one big chunk, because this is pretty straightforward. The pattern stays the same. Start high, start low, go back up the ladder if you want to. It's entirely up to you guys. So we'll do our last one here, a one repper, just to finish. And if that was enough, you could can it, or you could then start to whip back up the ladder. Rings you can buy, so Spock, you can buy rings in the store. Um, and our, on our website, the only problem is that the whole world is out of trading equipment at the moment, so we haven't got any stock in. But normally, you can buy them on our store. It's one of the most cost-effective uh, piece of equipment, which is probably do the best, one of the best investments you could make from a trading perspective. Take them anywhere, trade anywhere, ideal. Last one then, see where to finish. If you've got some gas in the tank, do as slow as you can on the way down. Just monitor that, e that eccentric tempo. Let's see if you can take five, six, seven seconds to get back to the bottom. Last one of these. Okay, pull through, and then we're just gonna put the brakes on. See how slow we can move. Working all the way through that range. Drop it. All right, pyramids. Great way to just get some volume in. So, quick recap. Using those strength-based clusters, test for, and let's say, let's say an eight repetition max. How many reps can you do? Or find a position which you can do eight times max. Or take something like a pipe push-up. How many reps can you do? We need to try and scale that on. From a strength-based adaptation, guys, we don't really want to work here much higher than 10 reps. There's a bigger conversation about why. But for most people wanting to learn calisthenics and they need some more force production for things like photo handstands, handstand push-ups, whatever it might be, we want to be working as rep ranges slightly slower. So pick a rep range where you're looking at between six and 10 repetitions. If you can choose six to 10 on those clusters, then start to go right, for argument's sake, I can do eight, my feet on the floor. I want to try and nudge that to nine, then I break that set up. That makes sense. If I can do six, I'm going to go and break that set up. I'm going to go three, two, two. All right, so I'm going to start to get a seven reps out of a six rep max. All right, hopefully I've explained that. Well enough, it makes sense when you start to play around with it. So test your movement, break your sets up, and just nail them. Pyramids, just volume. Interesting way to pack a little bit more volume into your program. The last one we're gonna finish with is gonna be a push-up cluster. So this is more like a metabolic type um, adaptation that we're looking for in terms of we're just gonna put a lot of work in. So it's gonna be four repetitions. We're gonna use a push-up, dead simple. But again, you could do pull-ups if you wanted to, if you're a sadist and you wanna like go for 40 pull-ups in about four minutes or any other movement that you choose. All right, it's a real nice one. So just, the, the key with this one is pick a movement which is easy to get in and out of. We're gonna go for 10 half minutes. So you can follow along guys. I'm gonna stop talking a little bit on this one. I'm just gonna tell you when to go. So I'm gonna bring you down so we can get on the floor a little bit. So well, for the purposes of internet connection, let's change set again. Let's see if that helps a little bit. We'll go back inside. Right, so set yourself up for some push-ups. Uh, four reps, I'll count you through the rest. Tempo's control, guys, keep it strict. All right, ready? So we're gonna get set in three, two, one, follow my tempos. We're gonna go down slowly, three, two, one, push back up, there's one, three, two, one, push back up, two, three, two, one, push four, three, last one, three, two, one, push. All right, 10 seconds on the rest period. Stop watch on. Okay, we're gonna go again, same thing guys, keep that tempo in three, two, one, let's go. Down, slowly, control, three, two, one, push back up. Down, three, two, one, push up. Number three, control it nice and slow. Push back number four, control that tempo. Push back out. Okay, set number two. All right, hold tight guys for the rest period. Get yourself set up again. Set number three. In three, two, one. Let's go. Control that tempo down slowly. Three, two, one. Push back out, down slowly, three, two, one. Push back through, number three, two, one. Last one, down slowly, three, two, 
One, push back out. Good. Hold tight. That's set number three. Going for number four this time, guys. We hit four, five, six, seven, eight sets, then you feel like you're gassed. You can can it. We're, just going, to, we're going to work through to ten for those that want to. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Let's go down slowly. Control it to the floor. Push back up. One. Watch that tempo. Two. Three. One more. Four. Good. Set four. That's four of them, right? Next one we're five. Halfway after this one. Rest goes quick, guys. Get ready. Three, two, one. Let's go. Down the control. Push back out. One. Two. Control the tempo. Three. Four. All right, set five in the bag. How are we doing? Hopefully you guys just get a little bit of pump on as we go through this. In three, two, number six, one. Let's go. Drop it under the control. Keep strictly disciplined, guys. One. With that body, body position, movement quality. Two. Three. Four. All right, six done. Everyone's got head down working now. Okay, in three, number seven, two, one. Let's go. Three, two, one, and the tempo push up one. Down slowly. Three, two, one, two, three, two, one, three. Last one. Three, two, one, four. All right, seven done. Three sets left to go. I'm saying 12 push ups, guys. All right, ready? And let's go down slowly. There's one. Two, watch that tempo. Three. Four. All right. Eight in the bag, nine and ten to go. Two left, and then we're gonna wrap it for today. In three, two, one, let's go. Control through one, two, slow it down. Again, it's tired, guys. Here's number three, last one, four. All right, one set left, and then we are home and dry. All right, let's finish off, guys, in three, two, one. Let's go. Slow on the control, guys. Last one, so give it everything on the tempo. One, slow as you can. Two, control it. Three, four, and rest it there. All right, good. So... Big set clusters done, volume based, getting a little bit of work in. Uh, any questions we've got on that volume based cluster? Hip hop head, slowing down temper regularly helps build muscle, yeah, 100%. There's quite a bit of research around hypertrophy, which is suggesting that we should be aiming for like, depends on research you read, 30 to 60 seconds of time with attention. Eccentrics are massively effective at building muscle or creating muscle damage effectively. So we're then gonna to start to build new contractile fibers within that. So yeah, people are so poor generally across the board at training tempo. It's one of the things I'm focusing on a lot at the moment, being much more disciplined, adjusting the reps and sets and intensity um, to make that more achievable. Rather than just sacrificing tempo, I'm gonna change the exercise or I'm gonna change the intensity or rest period, all right? So have a play around with those. Two year olds, yeah, my three year olds out of the house, I can't do that except with him on my back anymore. It's like three and probably 15 kilos and wiggly. Um, tough when you've got those kids on your backs. 10 second Wendy between sets here. Yeah, that's right, you can keep that rest period. If you need, like sometimes if I'm doing big sets and I'm struggling, what I'm gonna do is like change that rest period. 
there's so if there's this little point in me just kind of pushing and keeping in 10 seconds if I can't maintain the movement quality every time I move badly I'm teaching my brain that's an acceptable way to move and it's not so rather sacrifice a little bit of like the intensity make the exercise easier or give yourself more rest to maintain it if we're going hard out metabolic and that's the adaptation you want yeah like we can just go and get gassed and we'll, we'll just get through the workout if we're looking for strength adaptation we need to be a bit more sort of focused and disciplined glad it's working guys um Graham, should tempos time but times vary we want to try and keep them as consistent as possible but the reality is that we're going to start to um as we get tired we're going to find it more difficult ideally like if you're going to aim for a set five second each second, tempos four seconds whatever it might be for a cluster set then yeah like we want to try and be as consistent as much as possible that we can with those um, variables if we're doing tempo for um the pipes the big cluster the strength-based cluster we did at the start you might want to go 202 because it's just it's a strength-based adaptation we might choose to put an eccentric in there you've got to get into a little understanding of what what adaptation you get as a result of using a certain tempo and then apply that specifically um so here the variation is sets is good right yeah just keep it mixing up something a bit different Hip hop head, does it help strengthen the te tendon and connective tissues? I'm really not educated in that myself. What's going to strengthen tendons and connective tissue is stress and gradual loading over time. So, eccentric training, yes, is going to have some benefit um, to that. But the real key to tendons and connective tissue strength is going to be just gradual loading and allowing that tissue to adapt and, and ultimately become stronger and more robust. Um, and people go wrong with that with, with tendons and, and connective tissue, we put too many big spikes in load. If we just graduate that loading, we'll see improvements in, in connective tissue. And there are a number of different ways that that can happen. Um, injury therapy, does tempo training affect explosiveness? Good question, yes. You get what you train for. So in a periodized model, think about it this way. Bigger muscles can produce more force. So I might need to go and use tempo training, slow tempos down, more time under tension to create more contractile fibers in the muscle. The muscle grows and gets bigger. My job then, so I'm training for a muscle up, for example, or something else which requires explosive power. I'm then going to go and do a block of that specific work, explosive movement to take that, that, that new muscle tissue and then start to put the new wiring in there to make it activate quickly. So there are going to be staged approaches to how we're then going to start to create this adaptation of explosiveness. Well, that could start with getting a bigger muscle. It could just be train explosive and get more motor um, activation through those, through those muscle patterns. There's a number of different ways, but effectively always remember that you get what you train for. Train slow gets to muscle down the line or explosive tissue. Guys, apologies for the internet today. You are in the same place now as you've been every other Wednesday. Um, so sorry it's been dipping in and out. Jack, I'm here watching Wally on Amazon, so I don't know what it is. Hip hop head, last question. Uh, do you think there's something to be said for sticking to the same workout but progressing it gradually to build real strength and skills with progress technique? That is a key to training, progressive overload. And the one thing I was going to make a point actually reminds me about this is that um, two of the most valuable pieces of equipment you're going to have for this type of training in particular, I would argue for all training, is a watch. Like I use mine every single session now because it sets my lap times or my, I've got a, there's a strength set on it. So workout time and then I click it, get my lap time and then my rest period is holds me super accountable rather than just being like, I don't know, that was about a minute, so I'll just go again now, which actually was about five minutes because I've done some other stuff in between chat to somebody. So a bit more accountability in that. And the second one is around a train, a train manual or a diary. Document what you're doing. The whole point for, for we're trying to achieve is strength-based training is week on week to be able to do more or to do more intensity, more volume, whatever our desired adaptation is. So if you know that you went on a set of pipe push-ups, for example, that you did six and then you broke your sets down in the first kind of, you have five sets of that, right? The first three sets, you went four, two, one. Okay, you hit your seven reps. But by the last set, you actually only do three, two, one, one. We're losing that volume a little bit. So if you know what you've done, you can then basically set yourself a target to, to, to upgrade at each time. It's exactly the same way of coming into the weight room in a gym and going, I'm gonna put a bit more weight on the bar than I did last week. Keep a track of it, make notes as to where you kind of struggled. And then when you come back to that same session, try and do a little bit more. That's progressive overload. And that's what's over time going to help us to build strength and get a better performance. All right, guys, slightly longer one from me today. 40 minutes is not too bad, I guess. Hope that makes sense. It's quite difficult from these kind of sessions when we're doing these sorts of variables to, uh, to know where everyone's at and what everyone's doing. But I hope it just gave you some ideas that you can throw into your training this week or next week over the weekend or whatever. Play around with it, have some fun with it. 
Um, and again, these are specifically just, these are really good for building foundation strength and also for hypertrophy. So I'm using these a lot at the moment because I just want to get more volume in my training program. I want to progress that intensity. So that's the that's adaptation I'm specifically looking for. Tempo is really important that I'm not too worried if I get a little bit sort of like slow in the process. I'll put some speed into my training in the next phase. All about periodizing it through a little bit. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Have a good day. Enjoy, uh, enjoy your training sessions. I'm going to do a little bit more now, I think, although I've actually packed in quite a bit and I feel a bit tired. So maybe realize that I'm a bit more fatigued than I thought I was. Time for a little bit of something. Guys, have a good day. I'm going to catch you all soon. Instagram.